Hi, everyone. It's Leslie Keith, occupational therapist and lymphedema therapist. I've been treating lymphedema and other lymphatic and fat disorders for over 20 years. And I'm here today to talk to you about another topic that's of interest to the lymphatic community. Today, I want to talk about salt. And first, let me make it clear that I am not a dietitian. I'm not a medical doctor. And if you are going to modify your diet um, and change the amount of salt you eat, you need to talk to your medical provider first. But I wanted to give you some information about salt because this does come up a lot with the people that have a lymphatic or fat disorder because they do um, are under the misconception that they have to really limit their salt intake because of how it affects their swelling. So let's talk about it a little bit. And actually salt is a vital electrolyte. You need a certain amount of salt for life. And so I wanna just talk to you about a couple of the roles that sodium or salt, um, how, what it does in your body. And it's really important for fighting infection. There's usually a lot of salt to, just stored right underneath your skin and then it's kind of a barrier and helps you to fight an infection. It facilitates muscle contraction and the nerve cell transmission. Um, it re regulates the blood volume and it maintains your fluid balance in your body. So these are all really imp important functions of, of salt. Having low salt or low sodium in your blood, in your body is dangerous. That is actually worse than having too much salt in your body. So interestingly, that it says that it's 31 uh, times more common for someone, especially if you're elderly, to be go to the ER because you have too little salt, because you're salt depleted than if you have too much salt. So that's a much more common ER admission. And this is out of uh, Dr. James Nicolataniel's book, The Salt Fix. I highly recommend that book. So low salt in your blood is called hyponatremia, and it's often the cause of heat stroke or heat exhaustion. If you've ever had that happen, it's because you sweat so much salt out of your body, and then you get heat exhaustion, or the even worse one is heat stroke. So you need salt to help you with that. Um, so let's talk about why do you swell after you have salty food? After you eat salty food, you may have noticed that you seem to swell. Well, it's not the salt that you're eating that's causing the problem, it's the carbs. So quite often the foods that are, have a lot of salt in them are pretzels, potato chips, things like that, that are very, very salty. And they also are very high in carbohydrate, are high in starches. And that causes your body to release insulin to try to manage the carbohydrate. But insulin also tells your kidneys to retain salt. So um, the problem is not the salt, it's the carbohydrate. Interestingly, one of the premier books about lymphedema and the management of lymphedema by the Kesley Smiths out of Australia, they talk about the dangers of telling someone with a lymphatic disorder that they need to keep their salt intake low. They even call it, quote, the uselessness of a low salt diet. They do not feel like this should be the recommendation for people who have a lymphatic disorder. And they specifically state that it, telling people to restrict their salt intake because they have a lymphatic disorder is unnecessary and, it's, and it um, causes people to suffer needlessly from low salt. So I highly recommend that you discuss this with your physician. And particularly if you are using a ketogenic way of eating and you tend to then excrete salt daily and you need to get that replenished, you're gonna have more needs for salt. So talk to your physician about how you eat and um, the need to possibly adjust your salt intake. Um, let's also talk about the PURE study, which is, um, it was a, a, an amazingly large epidemiological study. It had 135,000 people in this study that, that participated in it out of 18 countries and it took place over seven years. So they were looking at the salt intake of people who had both a, a cardiac, uh, past cardiac event or hypertension or people who did not have that problem. And they were looking at what was the salt intake of, of these people. And it was very interesting that they concluded that the majority of people actually need about four to five grams of salt per day, of, excuse me, of sodium per day. Um, and what is our recommendation? We're recommended that we limit our intake to two grams per day. 
But what they found that is actually you had worse and more severe dangerous problems when you were below that four gram level. We're all at the, the two gram level. And so, um, so it's you know, a lot fewer problems if you get way up above that five gram level. So consider having more salt. We really think that the, really the, the optimal intake is four to five grams of, of sodium per day, which turns out to be about two and a half teaspoons of salt. Um, but again, talk to your doctor. So, um, and another thing that happens too is that when we, since we're losing a lot of salt in the ketogenic way of eating, and, we, and if we're already eating a low salt diet, we tend to get what people have always called was um, keto flu. And because the symptoms of low salt, listen to this, there are, it's extreme lassitude and fatigue, it's muscle weakness, it's headaches, it's lightheadedness and dizziness, anxiety, nausea, and you can even vomit, and you can have insomnia. These are all things that we think it feels like the flu, but really you're just low salt. So a quick fix, about an eighth teaspoon of, of salt in an eight ounce glass of water, drink that up, you should see improvements within five minutes. If you don't, then it's something else, but you haven't done anything dangerous just by giving yourself some salt. So consider modifying your, do your diet and um, adding more salt to it as, and, and decreasing your carbs, having a ketogenic lifestyle. Thanks for tuning in today.